Welcome back to the Drive to School podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. I am Pastor Goodman, and joining me today is Michelle Bauman. She is the 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 director of Why for Life, I believe, right? Yep, that's right. So first, before we get in, tell me a little bit about Why for Life and why it's such a great organization. Sure. So Why for Life is the youth portion of Lutherans for Life. And what I do is I go around uh, across the nation and serve um, high school and college youth, help them to become gospel motivated voices for life. Um, Sometimes that's in person. So travel around a lot, but also we offer lots and lots of um, opportunities to engage online. We have lots of digital digital resources as well as you know the the paper versions so that you can hand out or post things. Um, but what we really hope is that you will not only become a gospel motivated uh, voice for life, but that you will also engage um, in your community as a voice for life, um, as a as a messenger of hope uh, with other young people across the United States. So that's what Why for Life is all about. It's all about equipping young people to share the gospel and to uplift and uphold lives, um, no matter their abilities, no matter um, you know how they look, what where they're from, how they speak, um, but to uphold lives because every life is valuable. I really like where we're kind of going with this. So there, there's almost two ways you could take uh, that this being for life, um, because you, you can sort of take the the dancing around the narrow route, which is usually just in terms of uh, abortion, uh, but it could also be a lot more than that. So I, I guess that's maybe the first question is, what do you mean by saying that you are for life? Yeah. So when you're for life, you are in it for the long haul, right? So you are in it from the beginning of life all the way to natural death on into eternity, right? So as Christians, we recognize that life doesn't end uh, at the grave. Life goes, goes well beyond. So when we're for life, we're for upholding life in all situations. So um, yes, we are definitely um, going to be there during discussions about abortion and IVF and things that happen at the beginning of life, even in the womb. But life issues don't just happen in the womb, right? So life issues happen after birth too. They involve, they can happen um, in marriage, right? When, a, when brokenness enters the world, when brokenness enters our life and it's bound to because of sin, then life issues often result. So um, issues like divorce create life issues. Um, sometimes a physical disability or a mental disability might create a life issue. A, a person's life needs to be upheld and supported um, so that they might achieve the things that they want to achieve um, and, that, and that God has in store for them, right? Uh, it can include our mental health. So, you know, right now we've seen a huge increase uh, in young people who are struggling with depression and anxiety. Um, and so that's a life issue. That's, that's a, an opportunity to intervene with the gospel of Christ, with the affirmation that this life is important, important enough to pause for, to stop for, to reroute ourselves for, and to support that life, right? Um, it's not, it's, it's, you know, um, it's not the person on the side of the road that we walk past. It's the person that we that we see in need of help and we and we assist, right? Because God has placed that person <clears throat> in our path, right? It's part of our vocation now. God has specifically placed, dropped that person in our life and said, here, here is an opportunity to love and to serve. So we have opportunities all through life. Um, it can come with, with marriage, um, like later on in life when you're looking for a spouse, dating, what real love is. Should I cohabit? Should I not? What's best uh, for my future marriage? Life issues can happen um, with you know sicknesses, with illness, with cancer. Um, there's, there's just so many opportunities to address life issues. Um, and then we've got you know, some big ones too, like culturally, um, what do we do in the face of poverty? What about human trafficking? What about refugees? What about war, right? These are all life issues and whether they're life issues um, that we have to address like at this moment because God has placed someone in our life who needs our help or whether they're big picture life issues, how do we respond as a Christian to the issue of poverty, to the issue of human trafficking, to war, right? How do we respond? Those are 
that those are the topics <clears throat> that we talk about, the things I love talking about, um, because yeah, life, uh, supporting life is not just for the, the first nine months in utero, um, but it is really about loving people um, all the way unto s- salvation. So thanks That's for asking. That's a fantastic <laughs> response. No, I can't tell you how valuable that is because I, I mean, not only do we have sort of the very common criticism when it comes to being pro-life that, um, well, after the, the child is born, then you want to be of no help at all because you're just in it for calling people away from doing something you disagree with, but what do you do for for the people. So it's, it's then a, a life issue is not simply about um, calling people away from what's wrong, but it's about you yourself leaning into what's right to offer hope, to offer comfort, to offer love and service to neighbor as God has given us to do. And that opens up um, a, a much, much larger discussion, which is worth having because that, that our Lord would die upon the cross for us, seal us into salvation in the waters of our baptism. It's not simply so that we can stand outside in an abortion clinic and, and yell at people, but it's rather to actually address the fact that if sin breaks stuff, how can we offer comfort both there and everywhere else for the rest of their life? You've, you've raised a lot of topics that are, are on hearts and minds everywhere. Um, so it almost makes sort of the, the next question uh, a little bit redundant, but I'm gonna go ahead and ask it anyway. Why should we be for life, especially in the face of all of these issues? Yeah, well, there's lots and lots of reasons to be for life. And the first one is that we, we ourselves are made for life. That's, that's how God intended. Um, he intended for human beings to live forever. And uh, with the sin of brokenness or the brokenness of sin, I'm sorry, with the brokenness of sin, that that life has to come to a, a temporal end, right? Um, death eventually results from our sin. Um, but God comes into uh, that brokenness and he refines, he, he reforms, right? He creates life anew uh, and gives it for eternity. So we were created, hand created by God. Um, and that didn't just happen in Genesis. It, Genesis, it continues to happen today. Every child, no matter the the condition in which that child was conceived uh, has been hand formed by by God. Life doesn't exist without God interacting uh, to create it, right? No life is an accident. Um, And so, so life is precious because it was created by God, but it's also precious because of the very thing that you've said, uh, because it's been redeemed by Jesus, right? So, so um, the, the blood of Christ um, has paid for for all people. He didn't come just to save you or just to save me. He came to redeem the whole world and all of the generations before and after him. And so um, these lives, these lives are are precious uh, to him. But but why why share that message? Because we live in a very dark world, a world that answers the questions of life right? The question, the life issue issues with the answer of death, right? So the solution to pain and suffering is often death, or it is, it is a a medication that, um, that doesn't just alleviate it, but, but um, sends us into oblivion, right? The answer the world gives is not an answer of hope. And so as people of life, we have a message that is desperately needed in today's society. Um, and whether that message comes from a five-year-old child who says, you're special to me, I love you, or whether it comes from a, a young person who reaches out and says, I care about you and I want to help you get help, right? Or whether it comes from an adult uh, who says, you know what, I love you enough that I'm, I'm, I'm going to pull you out of this situation or correct this behavior or provide a home for you. Um, These are all uh, messages of hope. So that's, that's why we're for life. That's why we need to be for life because the world is thirsting for our message uh, in a very, very uh, dead and dark place. So we are the light, right? Jesus says, you are the light of the world. Uh, he sends us out and, and we carry the light of Christ, the light of life in us. Um, and, and we shouldn't let the darkness overcome it. Jesus says it won't. Right. right. Um, because so, yeah. we, we talk about this. Um, 
you know, in a place where at a point we can agree with the rest of the world, but we keep talking. So it's the place where the, the atheist and the Christian can sit down together and agree that things die. Um, and the difference is that, that we get to be a lot more honest about it. Like we don't have to make friends with death. Death is called the last great enemy in the scriptures. Uh, Christ mourned death so much that he would give his own life to pull us back out of that pit. And so for us, being pro-life is not simply how long can we extend the inevitable, but rather we start with the resurrection and then we're backwards from that. We start with the resurrection of Christ that speaks to the darkness in a way that means that we don't need to shy away from it. We don't need to excuse it. We don't need to to justify it or medicate it away, but rather we can stand then in the face of all that is wrong, that, that sin would destroy under the light of the cross where Christ himself offers this forgiveness. When we can talk about a, a life as simply a temporal time in this world, I understand uh, a, a bleak discussion because really if all I have are 80 years, if I'm lucky, family history would say otherwise less, um, <laughs> Then you introduce my own sin that breaks so many things because I wish that brokenness was just sort of like something I can blame other things on. I'm the I'm the sinner breaking this stuff. And so you, sooner or later, you have to despair, look in the mirror and say, would the world be better without me? Um, in the face of uh, so much hardship in the world, I understand why people are afraid to bring new life here in the face of war and trafficking and all that is wrong. But when we start with the resurrection, we get to say, first and foremost, the last enemy has been defeated. The darkness doesn't get to win it is already lost and so yeah it's going to be a tough road but here's the thing we don't walk alone and so going with christ going with hope it's a different discussion to be pro-life here it's not simply can we encourage other people to carve out a little bit more time but rather has christ carved something out of an empty tomb uh when we start here, it, it, it's a much more joyous discussion. Um, I'm really excited to kind of see where we can start to talk a little bit more about this because we, we already touched on a lot of topics, but I don't know, where would you want to go next? Um, yeah, well, you know, definitely we could talk about how to be that gospel motivated voice. We could talk about, you know, how, how does our approach to life, how does it differ from the, the, the approach that the world has? Um, and even other pro-life organizations, right? Um, I think there's there's quite a few things that we could we could talk about there, but we could also talk about a topic. So you know, whatever whatever you you know whatever your youth want to talk about, that's what we'll talk about. So <laughs> I love it. Well, Michelle, thank you so much for uh, for joining us today in the Drive to School podcast. Uh, tell us about you have a website, right? Just in case yep. somebody wants to know a little more. Yes, yeah, so you can check us out at whyforlife.org. Um, we we have lots of resources on there that are downloadable. We have some videos as well. Um, but then there's also a list of events so you can can get connected with us. We have a, for those online resources and then those for those in-person opportunities. Um, but we also have an app, a Lutherans for Life app. So if you go to your app store and you download Lutherans for Life, um, you'll see that there's a Why for Life section on the app that's specifically designed for you. Um, in addition, we do have a podcast. So if you look up Youth for Life podcast, uh, you're going to hear about different life topics. Uh, each one is, you know, somewhere between 45 minutes and an hour long. Uh, so you can, when you have more time or listen to it in segments, but we try and address different, different topics that you might be facing um, or different um, maybe ideologies that you run into um, that you, you want a for life response to. So, so yeah, we would love to have people join us on those platforms uh, to learn more. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining us today in the Drive to School podcast. And I uh, can't wait to talk to you again. Yeah. Thanks for inviting me. I look forward to it. All right. We'll see you next time.